Hi everyone and welcome to this trip report. This video starts in Cologne, Germany's carnival stronghold and home to over a million people. In front of me you can see Cologne's main train station, one of the largest of its kind in Germany. And why am I here? Well, you're about to watch an early morning trip on one of Germany's newest high-speed trains, the ICE 4, from here to Hamburg. On our way to the destination, we are going to pass several large cities in one of the most densely populated areas of Germany. The trip should take 3 hours and 40 minutes for a distance of just a little bit over 500 kilometers. The train used is an ICE 4 operating as a sprinter. I'm going to explain what that means later in the video. For the moment, let's have a look at the features of the station. As it is marketed as a shopping station, you can find plenty of stores and restaurants in there, and many of them are open even on Sundays, which is uncommon in Germany. I'm on my way to the supermarket that operates around the clock. And as I'm going there, I believe it is time to introduce you to the travel classes and fares that Deutsche Bahn offers on the ICE, as well as to explain what kind of ticket I have booked for this very trip. In terms of travel classes, things are quite simple on German high-speed trains. There are only two of them. When it comes to the fares, though, there is a wider range of them, from a flexible one to various saver fares. For this trip, I booked a first-class ticket in the Super Saver fare. So what does that actually mean? Well, it means a relatively low price, but it comes with certain restrictions. First of all, you have to use the very train that you have booked, something that is called Zugbindung in Germany. So if you are late for your train, the ticket doesn't allow you to use another train. Moreover, lounge access is not included either. So for less than 50 euro, I got the following. A 2x1 cabin, a power socket right at the seat, and unlimited Wi-Fi. Food and beverages are not part of the ticket price, but the train attendants go around and collect orders and serve everything at your seat. Now I have reached the supermarket that I told you about a minute ago. It's quite small, but it has everything that one would need at 3 a.m. in the morning. Next to it, you can find various junk food options. Time to go to the platform, which will be number 6 today. As always in Germany, anybody can enter them which on the one hand makes traveling flexible and convenient when you're in a hurry, but on the other hand it is also a security loophole, so it's better to stay vigilant. Here it is, the ICE-4. Technically, the ICE-4 is the newest train of the ICE series, however, DB has just recently received updated versions of the ICE-3 as well. Actually, there are some aspects about this train that will certainly raise the eyebrows of many passengers. In spite of being the successor of the ICE-3, it is slower than the previous models and the way Deutsche Bahn has designed the interior also caused a lot of criticism. As I'm boarding it, let's do a deep dive into the technical characteristics of this German high-speed train. The ICE 4 was built by Siemens Mobility and now has a top operating speed of 265 km per hour. Initially, it was even lower than that. Wait, you may ask, a newer version that is slower than the predecessor in a highly developed industrial country as Germany? Well, the manufacturer and DB love to give themselves a green label, so they point out the efficiency of the train, the reduced energy consumption and the overall environmental friendliness. They don't like to talk about the maximum speed as much though, and the rationale behind that becomes clear when you look at the German railway infrastructure. Because on the map you can see that there are actually very few lines where trains can go as fast as 300 km per hour. In addition to that, Germany lacks a dedicated high-speed railway network, 
That means that in most cases the ICE has to share the tracks with all sorts of slower trains. Consequently, the ICE rarely reaches its top operating speed. So why buy a Ferrari if you only drive on gravel roads? Ok, so now we're in the first class cabin of the ICE4, which looks familiar if you have already seen some of my other videos. First class in Germany looks rather modest compared to other products in Europe. When the ICE4 was introduced, the cabin and particularly the seats were widely criticized as being uncomfortable, which led to DB retrofitting the trains with new seats. Also, the seat pitch in first class on this train is less than in the second class cabin of older trains from the ICE family. Anyway, I have reserved seat 74 for this trip. I like the little screen on the headrest that shows my reservation. Also, the cabin was clean, but I'm probably the first passenger this morning. But please tell me what you think about this cabin design and maybe what your favorite train is in that regard. Now here you can get an impression of the seat pitch. As far as I know it is 930 mm or around about 36-37 inches. Just as a comparison, the seat pitch on a Lufthansa A320 in economy class is just 30 inches. However, there is this footrest on the ICE and it seemed to be loose, it really annoyed me. Next to the seat we have an electric power outlet and apparently the cleaning wasn't as thorough as I had initially thought. Ok, so we have left Cologne main train station and you can hardly recognize anything from the window. We have started our trip next to the world famous Cologne Cathedral and at this moment we are passing the Rhine River on the Hohenzollernbrücke that was originally completed in 1911. On the other side of the river you can find yet another important railway station, Köln Messe Deutz, which is also used by numerous ICE trains. Well, this is what I bought earlier in the supermarket, but let's have a look at the food options offered on this train. I ordered a standard breakfast with cheese and coffee. In the meantime we have reached Düsseldorf, the capital of North Rhine-Westphalia and rival of Cologne. With over 600,000 inhabitants, it is the second most populous city in that state. This is Düsseldorf's main train station. On the opposite side, you can spot a night jet train operated by the Austrian state railway company ÖBB. I created a video about it a couple of years ago, which I believe is still worth watching. Now it's time for the breakfast. In the past I have had some good experiences with DB's onboard catering and this is what they have to offer today. For a total price of 12 euro and 90 cents there is not much room for complaints. The meal was of good quality and the train attendants were both kind and efficient. At this point we are in Duisburg, where still most of Germany's steel is produced, although the glory days of that industry are long gone. Nevertheless, Duisburg is still a city with nearly half a million residents and it has a railway station that serves over 100,000 passengers every day. From here it's only a short ride to the neighboring city of Essen, which is located just 15 kilometers east of Duisburg. There we make another stop. 
Again, a city that used to be home of Germany's heavy industry, steel and coal mainly. But things have changed. With over 10%, the unemployment rate is quite high and the city is trying to figure out its future. Back in 2017, it was the European Green Capital. That is an award issued by the European Commission that takes into account various environmental variables. This is Essen Main Station. It has 13 tracks that serve over 150,000 passengers daily. In the classification system of Deutsche Bahn, it is among Germany's 21 most important railway stations. That system is not solely based on passenger numbers, but also on certain technical aspects such as the length of the platforms. But let's turn our attention back to the onboard product. First class comes with unlimited Wi-Fi internet. Regardless of your travel class, you also have access to the onboard entertainment system and it actually has some Hollywood blockbusters available. For the most part, the internet connection was good enough to play a video on YouTube. My traditional Fox News CNN test also indicates that things work well in that regard. The loading times of those websites were acceptable. During the trip I made a noise measurement which resulted in an average noise of around 61 dBs. And here's the usual lavatory check. Everything ok here. And I recorded that towards the end of the trip. Ok, now let's enjoy the landscape and cities that we are passing. I'll be back in 42 seconds. We are getting closer and closer to our destination. At this moment we are crossing the Norder Elbe. Hamburg is Germany's second most populous city after Berlin. Over 1.7 million people live here. Strategically located at the Elbe River, which eventually gives it access to the North Sea, it has a long tradition as a mercantile city with a significant part. Besides that, it has also a famous entertainment quarter that actually played an important role in the career of the Beatles. You can already spot the Hafen City, a quarter of Hamburg that has been constructed on the area of the former Freeport. It is one of the largest conversion projects in Europe and there is still a lot of construction going on. One of the buildings that was created on this land is the headquarters of the German news magazine Der Spiegel. And here we are about to arrive at Hamburg main station, Europe's second busiest railway station after Gare du Nord in Paris. But my trip doesn't end here, as I travel all the way to the final destination of this train. On the short ride to Hamburg Altona railway station, we get to see some more landmarks, including the Jungfernstieg, which is the promenade in the background. Another important structure of Hamburg is the Heinrich Hertz Tower. This footage here shows the overall size of this very ICE train. Remember, it can carry more than 900 passengers. 
As we are about to arrive, let me give you some more thoughts on this product, as well as my evaluation. One thing that I would like to mention is that this is an ICE sprinter train, which means it makes less taps than a conventional ICE, and that's a good idea of DB to offer that. However, in spite of being one of the first trains of the day, we ended up with a delay of 10 minutes, which is not dramatic, but still noteworthy. The hard product is okay in my opinion. Moreover, I like the onboard catering as well as the free Wi-Fi internet connection. So overall, I would rate this trip with solid 3 stars, although that is kind of subjective. Okay everyone, that's it for this time. Thanks for tuning in and have a great day wherever you're watching.